Now, 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 so I'm coming to see everything to change. The change. And warp to make you open your brain. Open your brain. Eric Vanek is here, so remember the name. Remember the name. Hey, hey. He got the waiver wire for the week. Tell you who to start and who to give a seat. Dropping the podcast every week. You know the knowledge is elite. After the show, we gon' hold a Lombardi. Celebrating like we throwing a party. This the blueprint, and I know they gon' copy. Cause my intros always go to hottest. Cause this is America's game. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to America's Game, episode number 34. I am your host, Eric Vanek, and you can find me on Twitter at Eric Vanek NFL. And this week, I am joined by the man, the myth, the legend. Fezzle. Mm-hmm. Fezzle, man, a legend, yeah, man. But, you know, we're going we gonna to get there <laughs> one day, you know? Absolutely, we here, though. Absolutely. Hell yeah, man. Um, so, yeah, man, what do you think of um, free agency so far? I've been kind of crazy. Yeah, it's been crazy, man. I'm a little salty, you know. It's been a lot of Justin Fields hate and seem like it's uh currying over into the, the league as well, which we kind of already knew, but at the same time, you just had that hope. Like, if you get the right shot, the right team, this team that they got in Chicago, if he would have had that three years ago, we might not be talking about this. So yeah, um, but that Kirk Cousins to Atlanta, uh, that was a big one, yeah. especially for the weapons, if not for anything else. Um and uh, a lot of defensive moves too, though. I mean, I know we don't talk yeah. about that a lot in fantasy, but I, I like the defensive moves a lot. So, yeah, there's uh, been some definitely some good defensive ones for sure. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, as a Cowboys fan, what did you think of the Trent Sieg signing? <laughs> the guy's got that long snapper. Lately. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, they <laughs> they said that they, they said that uh, we was all in, so that's all we needed. I guess our team's so good, man. We ain't got to get yeah, nobody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That, that's the now, formula. We we let the scrubs get all the good players, man. We are, right. we good. Yeah, don't look at Twitter or any other Cowboys fans' mentions on that. They're uh, not too happy about not getting anybody. But, but you know what's so crazy about Cowboys fans? They cry every year about us not getting people. But okay. then when we got eleven wins, they say, "Oh, this is the right team. We gonna win." Well, I mean, right. it's the same team we've been playing with for three years. So right. You know, I, I I mean, I'll be honest. I I really liked last year's team. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought you guys had a good shot. Even, you know, before, um, you know, after Diggs went out, like I was like, ah, oh, that kind of sucks. But like they still held pretty strong without Diggs there for a yeah. while. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think if Diggs would have been there, it would have helped a little bit more. Um, but hey, it, it I, happens, man. That playoff collapse, man. That that wasn't nothing roster wise. They just. Yeah. You know, that was a mental thing. They just gave up. I don't know what happened, but. Yeah, they just, Green Bay came out and smacked them right in the and, mouth. And, and, and they ain't know how to recover, man. That yeah. was it. Yeah. So, you know, they, they they doing big things in free agency right now. Though, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, all right. So, uh, last week I had Mike on. We, we kind of talked about free agency and what has happened so far. So, on this week's episode, I'm going to kind of go through here and, and look at some of the signings that me and Mike um, didn't get a chance to talk about and kind of talk about it with you here first, um, cool. kind of get our first reaction. So um, looking over like um, the quarterback stuff, we did get the Russell Wilson, the, but we didn't talk about Justin Fields because that trade happened. Mm-hmm. What did you think with um, Justin Fields going to Pittsburgh? Well, apparently that was one of his choices. Um, some right. came out of, yeah, some came out about, yeah, other teams and they took his wishes and sent them to Pittsburgh. Uh, I believe if Russ wasn't there, it would have been a great move. But knowing that Russ is there, it's still an okay move. But if Russ goes out there and take him to the playoffs, win a playoff game, it's like, man, you know, what, what's what's next for Fields? You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. uh, it is a good spot because of the coach, Mike Tomlin. I believe Tomlin is the right guy. Um, whenever your confidence is low, I promise you, Mike Tomlin will get you right. So. I like that aspect as far as uh, like the locker room and what's around them. But um, they definitely got to work on that offense because losing Deontay Johnson wasn't ain't going to help nobody. So uh, I like the signing. I just hope he gets a shot. I'm not hoping Russ is terrible, which he's not the best at this point. But um, I just hope he really gets a shot and not when they 
down 28 points in the fourth quarter and they like hey here go fields let's see what he can do you know what i'm saying right so, right that's really i, I like this i like the trade for pittsburgh as well um you could sit you sit fields for this year it's not going to really co- cost them anything you can go to him next year if you need to if you know you don't mm-hmm. sign russ to a long-term deal and i also like it too like I mean, Russ really isn't this type of guy, but if he gets all pouty and, and pissy about Justin Fields being there, they can just cut his ass, like, straight yeah. up right now. It's, like, only a million dollars for the year. So if he yep. gets in, in his feels and he's, you know, being a little bitch about it, they'll say, okay, here you go. Here's your walking papers, and we'll start Justin Fields. So there's that aspect to it, too. But I got to, you know, as, as a Browns fan, this sucks, but I got to commend Pittsburgh for what they did. They went from Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky and Mm -hmm. Mason Rudolph quarterback room to uh, Russell Wilson, Justin Fields. And I don't even care who the third quarterback is room. And it's less, less than $5 million. That's even crazier. You know what I'm saying? For, for a $1.2 million contract and a six Mm -hmm. round draft pick. Yeah. I mean, and that completely changes their quarterback room. They're going to have three whole new quarterbacks in there because the other three are traded or have signed elsewhere that Mm -hmm. they've had. So a complete flip of the quarterback room, new offensive coordinator. Uh, So I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to work. We'll see, you know, if if there is a quarterback like uh, competition at all, it doesn't sound like it so far. Everything they're saying, Ross is the guy right now. Someone said that, Um, but Man, I, I I still would love to see Fields there. I think he's definitely the better quarterback, but he might have to sit a year. Maybe he sits a year with Russ. You know, Russ is a good teammate or something. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, I Russ. Think it's, I think it's a good. Situation. Russ seems like the guy that want to help him too. He don't seem like he's going right, yeah. to. Yeah, you know, hey, get out of my way, or you taking my job, like you know. Yeah, he tweeted. He's like, you know, Justin Fields, let's go. Uh-huh. A bunch of fire emojis or something. Yep. He said the quarterback room is going to be lit or something. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was, uh, it was nice to see that, but yeah. Uh, I'm, I did like that trade for sure. Yeah, um, that was good. Some other trades. Um, I don't think I got to the Sam Howell one. Sam Howell to Seattle. What did you think of that one? Uh, I think it was a solid move for a back. You know, better than Drew Locke, I believe. So, for right. for the actual team prospect of it aspect of, it, I liked it. Um, a lot of people believe that this is a Geno's almost out of here for Sam Howell to take over move. Um, I could see that only if Gino goes out there and stinks it up. Like right. if, if they go out there and they, you know, four and eight, then I right, Gino, it's time to just sit this one out, see what we got with Sam. But with that team that they have, I don't see how Gino can't at least win nine games with that team. So right. Um now whether they make the playoffs, that's a tough division. So that's and that's another thing with these teams. It seems like every division is getting better. So with Pittsburgh. They fighting with the three teams in their division. Um, yep. C- Seattle, you go, you know, the Rams, as bad as their roster was, they still made the playoffs. So, you know, that's true. Every division is getting better and better. So um, that trade to me says, Gino, we, you know, we want you, we like you, but if you're not playing good, we got somebody else that we're going to see if we can keep long term. So, and yeah. he got like two more years on his contract. So they don't even have to really worry about, um, you know, doing yeah, anything and, and he's proven he can play in the league. He, he can throw. That's for sure. One of, yeah, he played behind one of the worst offensive lines in the league. That guy was just getting sacked left and right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seattle's definitely an upgrade on the offensive line side of the ball. Uh, so yeah, I, I like that as too for Sam Howell. You know his prospects going forward. You know Gino's not like um, you know some super stud. He's played well in the past, but this is a whole new coaching staff. Yep. They didn't choose Gino Smith. They don't really know Gino Smith. So we'll we'll see how it goes there. Um, another one I I found kind of interesting: Curtis Samuel to the Bills. I think this could be a good little fit for uh, for Buffalo. What did you think of Samuel to the Bills? Yeah, that was a random sign. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, right. I actually thought Samuels was going to go somewhere like back to Carolina or maybe the Chiefs. You know, the Chiefs been looking for somebody for so long. Mm-hmm. But um, maybe they did it so the Chiefs wouldn't get him. I don't know. But um, it's right. not a bad not a bad sign. I mean, Curtis Samuel, he hasn't lost a step. He's still quick, still can, you know, run those under routes. Mm-hmm. Um, you throw him the ball in high volume, he's going to catch the ball and run with it. So he, he's definitely a yacht guy. So uh, I, I like it, man. You know, the way they play, 
it's more of a freestyle approach. Like I, I know they got plays and they draw them up, but it seemed like when Josh hiked the ball, he just run wherever he need to run and throw it wherever he need to throw. So right. uh, when you got a speed player like Curtis Samuel that can run routes, it makes sense to me. So I, I like it honestly. His his uh trajectory and fantasy definitely went up. That's for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I I don't like it for Khalil Shakir. They no, kind of are going to no. play the same little spot. Mm-hmm. Um. But, yeah, I, I'm interested to see Samuel in this spot because they've used those little Isaiah McKenzie's and Cole Beasley types. Yeah, uh, Samuel's a little different than those guys but can do some of the same stuff, you know, those short passes underneath. Uh, you can use them in the running game as well. So mm-hmm. I am curious to see how they could use um, Curtis Samuel. So that one's a good one. And with the money that they have, honestly, they couldn't really sign a big free agent. So, you know, that was a, a solid signing just for something cheap, you know. Right um let's see a couple other ones this is another interesting one mike gasecki to the Bengals. <laughs> i um it's a guy i've never really like i've never really liked gasecki but he does have a good role like he can be like that kind of slot receiver out wide type of player um mm-hmm. and now with you know tyler boyd not going to be back there like gasecki in the slot for them is really really intriguing to me um, to be with Joe Burrow and those guys, so I think Gasecki is a guy that I'm I'm kind of buying back into if I can get him cheap. You know, he's not going to be as cheap as he was. Um, yeah. but if you did get some cheap Gasecki, I think this is a good spot for him. Like we've seen Hayden Hurst come around and and have a really good year with the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we wanted Herb Smith to do it, he didn't really do it. Um, CJ Uzama has done good there in the past, and Gasecki is more talented than all of those guys. So, yeah, uh, yep. I'm very curious to see how this one works out. What did you think of it? Yeah, I, I like the side of man. Gasecki to me, um, he's a he's not a Travis Kelsey like because he's nowhere near Travis Kelsey, but he mm-hmm. gives you that feel of a Travis Kelsey with his body, his frame, and he even got a little swagger to him, you know what I'm saying? So, right. I like how he plays on the field, how he moves. Um, it's a great signing. I mean, especially if T Higgins was ultimately moved, uh, it's going to open up a lot more targets for him. So I like that, man, especially around the goal line, just throwing the ball, throw it up in the air. So, yeah, um, he's a, he's a bigger target. So that could definitely yeah. work as well. I agree. Yeah. I mean, he had a lot of competition with, uh, Hunter Henry over there and, uh, Pittsburgh, I mean, uh, with the Patriots, but, um, um, yeah, I mean, if, if he was the number one, that those end zone touchdowns would have been going to Gusecki for sure. So, I like oh, him over there with, with Joe Burrow. And, uh, you know, why not add, keep, keep adding fuel to the fire over there in, in Cincinnati? So, <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's just another really good weapon that they can use to, um, you know, get this offense going. So, I, I yeah. like it for sure. Yeah. Um, let's look at a couple other ones here that I've seen. Oh, this one I, I missed last week. I don't know why, but I'm a as a Browns fan. I don't know why I missed it, but Jerry Judy to the Browns. What yeah, did you think of that yeah, trade? Yeah. Man, that was like the most – if I if you had to give me a, a bet, like on DraftKings, to place a bet, where would he go? It would not have been the Browns. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I don't think anybody saw that coming whatsoever. I didn't even think I heard a peep of the Browns looking for a receiver, let alone Jerry Judy. So mm-hmm. um, when he went there, I was like – like what what is going on but as you sit back and try to think about you know how it fits um i think it's going to come down to deshaun watson really if if you look at yeah. most of the plays that was getting done by uh and joku and, and cooper they all look better with flacco so it's really depending on me if deshaun watson go out there and do what deshaun watson is paid to do and what he's supposed to be doing and jerry judy can let any in his contract get so he wants some money so he he gonna go out there and try to ball out. I just don't know how much that's gonna affect Cooper and Joku and other guys, you know, mm-hmm. um, around him. But like Elijah Moore is pretty much a, a you know, good luck with him. But yeah. um, I, I like Judy, man. He he's not to me. He wasn't supposed to be drafted as high as he went, but I liked him as a player coming into the league and getting in the league. It's just his health. Can he stay healthy? Um, and again, can his quarterback stay healthy? So both of them can right. stay out of the. Uh, medical tent and they, they should be solid you know right i like that you know judy went to alabama because of amari cooper um i think mm-hmm. he, yep. know, cooper was in his junior year um and judy was going in as a freshman so he wanted to learn from cooper um so i don't know if they're like good friends or anything obviously they went to the same school so 
Um, I don't know like what the friendship is like. I haven't really read too much about that, but hopefully they're, you know, can be buddies. Um, I like that him and Elijah Moore can kind of um, play the same roles. Like they can both play outside or inside, whichever mm-hmm. one. So you can kind of split those guys up. You don't have to have one be strictly slot, one strictly outside. I like that. Um, yeah. It hurt Cedric Tillman a little bit because he's going to be the fourth receiver. Um, so I think Tillman's going to kind of need an injury. Plus you have Njoku too. So he falls. Yeah. What happened? Like David Bell. Team. They got all, they got a lot of guys. Yeah, I mean, they got some guys, um, some guys that can play. Um, it's just, you know, a, a big muddy situation now. It I mean, is. they did pretty good on the trade as well. They like, didn't have to give oh, up yeah. a whole ton for Judy, um, just to kind of kick the tires for a year and, and see what happens here with Jerry G. So I like it for the Browns, but I agree with you hundred percent. It's going to come down to uh, Deshaun Watson's play. Is he healthy? Mm-hmm. Um, kind of a, on a side note, I, I just thinking about it. I don't know if I'm worried about, Watson's health or if the Browns are because they signed two quarterbacks. They signed Jameis yeah. and Tyler Huntley. Um, and they still have Dorian Thompson Robinson, who they drafted last year. So you got to think somebody there is going to get cut at the end of uh, training camp because no team's going to keep four quarterbacks. Um, so yeah, but what a, what an just... odd mix, Jameis and Tyler Huntley. Like that that couldn't have been right further apart of a comparison. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> right, yeah, Jameis I... is just going to sit there and throw it, and Huntley's kind of more <laughs> like Watson. He can move around and, and make some plays mm-hmm. um, athletically, like Watson does. Um, and then Thompson Robinson, same thing, but just kind of curious, like why sign that, you know, Tyler Huntley, is, is there something up with Watson's shoulder? I don't know. They're, are they not? Yeah, that was, his that was a little, uh, So um, mm-hmm. we'll see what happens there, but um, let's see a couple other ones. I'm uh, just kind of looking through our list here that we got. <clears throat> uh, Carlton Davis. That was a good trade for the lions. He went mm-hmm. to uh, from Tampa Bay to Detroit, so I thought that was a good one for them. Um, we didn't talk about that. I mean, Josh Jacobs went to Green Bay. We talked about, but AJ Dillon went back there for a really cheap deal, one point one two five mil. So uh, yeah. AJ Dillon kind of not making very much money, but um, you think they probably want more of like a receiving type back? But maybe Jacobs is going to be the one that. Um, takes that that full role on i mean for one million i guess why not you know so yeah i I mean it's he's comes back to his team and they're not paying him they're paying him very very little exactly yeah they're familiar with him Mm -hmm. um joe flacco to the colts i was kind of uh (laughs) disappointed in that one personally i wanted to see flacco back in cleveland but yeah uh, good good signing for the colts to kind of teach anthony richardson some more what, what better guy than to have joe flacco yep. teach him the ropes yeah that, that 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 right there i like more so for anthony richardson's growth so i like that right yeah me too um now okay here's one that we didn't talk about last week hollywood brown to the chiefs um i think i don't want to say he's tyreek hill or anything but if there's anybody that in the nfl that has Close to Tyree kill speed. Marquise Brown is probably on the short list of guys that can do that. So sure. I'm excited that this element comes back to the chiefs offense with a guy, not as talented as Tyree kill, but he's close. Like, mm-hmm. you know, speed wise, the stuff that they do, uh, he might not do a lot of the, um, you know, running type running back type stuff that Tyree kill did, but the, all those motions, those quick motions that they would do with, and get um, Tyreek open, I really think Hollywood Brown can do the same thing. I'm expecting a monster year for Hollywood Brown. I think I'm shooting him up my mm. rankings quite a bit. I, I really, I think this might be one of the best signings um, of all free agency. Oh, yeah. And, and it's funny because, I mean, we all sim- pretty much talk about this stuff all the time but i had literally had a conversation a couple of days ago uh one of my guys he's a chiefs fan diehard chiefs fan and he was saying like man we don't really need marquise and i was telling him i said honestly you know i could see marquise coming to the chiefs doing what juju smith schuster did just sign a 10 11 12 million dollar deal and then trying to get a night get a calvin ridley deal the following year you know what i'm saying so right uh if you ever going to bet on yourself you bet on yourself with pat mahomes as your quarterback so right. um 
as long as he could stay healthy, man, 1,400 yards could be easy for him in his offense. So, I mean, it's going to be tough with Rice and because Rice is a volume player, but he can get the ball, like you said, that speed, one one ball, he can go 70 yards with it. So, Yeah, um, and Mahomes, Mahomes has that cannon. He hasn't exactly. had this element since um, Tyreek left. I'm not counting yep. Valdez Scantling because he couldn't hold on to the fucking ball. But Exactly. Uh, um Hollywood is, is definitely, you know, a top 36 wide receiver. Uh, now he's probably moving, for me, up into the top 24, 25, mm. somewhere in that range um, for the season. I think he could have a really, really big year. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And, and another, honestly, if okay. he plays well, they might want to keep him back, you know? I mean, it's, exactly. it's, it's hard to keep bet. rotating receivers, man. Pat say, look, I need him here. Kel- Kelsey might leave. And, uh, yeah, then. You know, y'all done gave me a different receiver every single year. Like, I need a right. guy now. So right. he can play and his way in the stand. They're picking at the bottom of the draft, you know, as usual. Um, could they still take a wide receiver at 32? Yeah. I don't yeah. know if it's as likely. But, mm-hmm. like, they were in the, you know, Xavier Worthy, Troy Franklin. Um, Lad kinda, Yeah, you know, that, those kind of receivers. So, um I don't think they're going to go there because they do have some other needs. Like, you know, they need some offensive, uh, a little bit of offensive line help. They could always use defensive yep. line. Um, if they yep. trade Legereus Sneed, they can use about to say, yep. yeah. get a safety so up. Mm-hmm. They're going to uh, – they have some options down there. Um, this one happened, I believe, yesterday. It was Alexander Madison to the Raiders. It's kind of like a backup. Mm-hmm. Uh, Madison kind of shit the bed last year for us in fantasy, but um, I think it's a solid pickup for the Raiders. I'm thinking Zamir White's still going to be the starter, um, and yeah. Madison should be a, a solid backup, kind of like he was for Dalvin Cook. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, he's not a number one. He showed that last year. Right. So, uh, you know, him in a run heavy offense like the Raiders, he, he's okay with volume. He's just not going to give you a lot of yards per carry. So, right. You know, he's going to – he could find some creases at times. You know, okay goal line guy. But um, Jameer should lead that ship. So, that's that's an okay yeah. sign. Um, another sneaky sign I wanted to bring up. Um, I haven't heard too many people talk about it. If he's healthy um, and over his stuff that he was dealing with, Hayden Hurst to the Chargers, I think that could be a, an interesting one. Um, yeah, it was definitely a, sneaky too. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a solid blocker. Um, and Jim Harbaugh loves his tight ends. For sure. Wouldn't be surprised if he drafts another one or two. I mean, they signed uh, Will Disley and Hayden Hurst. I think Parham is still there and all those other guys that they had. So they're going to have a lot of tight ends. This is going to be a team that probably carries four tight ends like usual. Mm -hmm. Um, But I thought this was a really sneaky signing. I don't know if he's going to have, like, some monster fantasy impact, but if you told me at the end of the year he was a – top 18 tight end i wouldn't be shocked yep yep no i i was like you say one it was a sneaky signing because i didn't even know it until i i don't know i think it was like a day later i found out about it so i didn't right. even know yeah, when it was it, the same way i think i was looking yeah, at a sleeper of available players mm-hmm. and he popped up i'm like when the hell did he go to charger yeah he was trending or something yeah. i was like like what yeah. <laughs> so every league i could find him though i picked him up for a low low price so I, I definitely got him in yep. some best balls for sure just in case but um I'm with you. I think they're going to try to move the ball slow anyway. So him helping, being a good blocking tight end and, uh, you know, some rub routes where he move off the line and maybe catch a touchdown or two, something like that. So uh, and, uh, he should be and, solid coming off of the health scare. I'm not sure what it was, but uh, I remember it was like some health scare that he had last year. So. Yeah, it was. Um... Well, was it like a heart? Mem- mem- his heart memory loss. I think it was like memory loss. Like Oh, OK. Or something like that. Um, hmm. yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I know his father, his daddy, his daddy came out and talked about it, but right. Um, yeah, but it was another a good signing that I really, really, really liked. Um, and hopefully, you guys went out and got him in your uh best ball leagues and lineup leagues. Colby Parkinson to the Rams, tight end, three I years, did. 22 mm-hmm. and a half million. Um, I really like this guy in Seattle. He was just buried behind Will Disley for whatever reason they wanted to play him still. And obviously no offense, but when Parkinson, whenever he got in there to play, um, he always made plays, man. He can block really good um, route runner. Um, He's not like uh, 
super fast, but he's deceptively fast. Mm-hmm. Um, he can be a str- uh, seam stretcher. Um, to, yeah, I, I don't know. I've always liked Coley Parkinson's game. And him and Davis Allen together as the tight ends with Higby probably missing half the year um, with his late season injury. I really like um, this signing of Parkinson there because with Stafford, um, the way they use tight ends in this offense, I think Parkinson is going to be a a very cheap value, and it wouldn't shock me if he's in that top 15 tight end talk um, at the end of the season. Yeah, and if it happened anything else, read the money, you know? Um, He got a nice-size contract. He didn't come in for no three full million dollars and just come help us out. You know, they signed him to a multiple year contract. And uh, I actually had Allen on a lot of my leagues at the end of the year last year, I picked him up. Yeah. So and then once I. this yeah. news came out, I'm like, damn, I picked up Parkinson. I didn't know who to keep. So I think I'm going to go with Parkinson because of the money. You know what I'm saying? They, they gave yep. him a nice deal. And when you paying somebody I mean, multiple years, you know, I think it was like $10 million a year or something like that. It was, it was a nice little contract. So. Yeah, if you can keep them both, I would try to keep them both. Oh right yeah, now and just yeah. kind of kind of see what happens there. Because mm-hmm. um, Hig- Higby yeah. definitely is uh, coming to the end, so I can yeah. see them, you know, moving on for sure, for sure. Um, next one I wanted to talk about was same team, Jimmy Garoppolo to the Rams as the backup for Stafford. What did you think of that one? Uh, it's okay, I guess. Um, okay. I'm not sure whatever happened to Stinson Bennett, man. I know last year he was like the uh, preseason man. You know, they was hyping him up. They loved him, and something happened, and we just ne- never heard from him again. So, right. Um, I think this is McVeigh just playing chess. You know, look, I got I got two season vets. You know, so if if anything happens to Matt Stafford, Garoppolo isn't Stafford, but he's been in the league enough to know you know, what I want to call and how I want to run this offense. So, right. um, you know, he don't have a bring in some 23-year-old that don't know anything and try to coach him up. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's a solid signing. We, we're we praying that Stafford doesn't get hurt and he keeps playing and we never see Jimmy G. But right. if he comes right. in, at least we know the call, the play caller that's, that's um, calling the place for him is going to put him in the right situation, same as he was in San Fran. So, um. You know, I, it was a good sign if you want to keep the same momentum with Stafford if he ever goes down. Right. I, I think it's just a, a really good insurance, kind of like how they brought Carson Wentz in at the end of last year. Yeah. Uh, I think Garoppolo is an upgrade over Carson Wentz. I think Garoppolo can still play. He's going to miss the first like two, two games. games. Yeah, yeah, he's got that suspension he's got to deal with. Um, but, yeah, I, I really um, – I actually really like this signing for Garoppolo. Good landing spot for him. Mm-hmm. Be in the McVay offense. McVay knows how to work with these quarterbacks. And if Stafford ever yep. does go down, which he has in the past, I think Garoppolo can come in and he's not going to do what Stafford does, but he's going to have a um, a solid uh, foundation here for him. Uh, so I yeah, like that one. Jimmy G could just stay in the West Coast, man. He's been in San Fran, Vegas, L.A. So, yeah, for you sure. know, be comfortable. Um, kind of look through the rest of these signings. We did talk about that one last week. Um, I did talk about that. KJ Osborne to the Patriots. I thought that was a solid signing. Like, I'm not expecting yeah. him to be some world beater, but um, it gives they, them a uh, Demario Douglas, KJ Osborne, Kendrick Bourne starting three right now. Like, I know it's they not need all the bodies they are, can get. So yeah, those are you three know. professional players that are all very solid in what they do. They're not going to go for a thousand yep. yards or anything, uh, but they're all very solid players. So I like that. They need to obviously get the superstar. None of those guys are superstars, mm-hmm. but at least they have um, some really good solid players there. So I like that. Um, oh yeah. They, they just the roots for the tree that's going to grow later, man. They, this year, they probably going to win three, four games. They, they pretty much know that coming into the season. So, you know, and I wouldn't be shocked if, they have so many holes that they're the team that Minnesota trades up with. So Minnesota can maybe oh, get yeah. Drake May or whoever. Yeah. If um, if I'm the Patriots, I would, man. Jaden Daniels wouldn't change my entire franchise. So as much as I would love him if he's there, I, I would I couldn't take him. I it's not that I don't think Jaden Daniels would change their franchise. I think he would, but he wouldn't have the right pieces around him to start. That, 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, yeah by the time they need his, a lot of pieces. By the time they get together, they be his contract would be up. They had to pay him three hundred million. It wouldn't right. make sense. Right. So right, right. Go get them two and first, might, and that's your boogie. You know, you're not like what Chicago's doing right now is perfect. They have a solid mm-hmm. offensive line. You got DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Cole Komet, DeAndre Swift, all these running backs. They're putting they have the offensive pieces that are actually good players around Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. With the Patriots situation, they just don't have any offensive talent. Nothing. I mean, they have solid players, but no superstar like um a Keenan Allen has been or a DJ Moore has been. Mm-hmm. Um so I, I would agree. You know the Patriots should move back and just start picking up pieces, and then you you can eventually get those guys. Maybe at eleven, um, if they trade back with the Vikings, maybe it won't. You know, Roma Dunze is there. Um, you can grab yep. him. You know, Brock Bowers is there. You can grab Brock Bowers. You know, mm-hmm. and start getting those kinds you. of um, pieces there for them. Um, yeah. Let's see some more signings. Um, okay, yeah, we didn't talk about this one last week. Uh, obviously, with Russell and Justin Fields getting traded, we had Kenny Pickett get traded to the Eagles. What did you think of that one? Yeah, it's like, man, life hits you fast, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Kenny Pickett, which, honestly, let's be real. It's kind of easy to say now, but we all mostly said it on draft day. I don't even think that they really should have took him in the first round. Um, it was a reach, but it was a guy that was in their backyard who they've been watching for a couple of years, so – they felt comfortable with it. Um, I always felt like that wasn't a Mike Tomlin pick. Though. I think Tomlin would have waited. But um, he's he with Philly now. I'm not sure why Philly needs him, but to have him for the contract that they got him for and not have to, uh, you know, go get a Mariota again or something like that. I mean, right. You know, I like it for that aspect. Just get a young guy that's already under contract and, you know, just keep him around. Yeah. I mean, he's – it's not like Pickett it was um... – terrible like you know exactly. Mariota yeah. there pick pickets an upgrade over Mariota so it's an upgrade For sure. they're 100%. a team that likes to collect quarterbacks mm-hmm. um as well so and develop them so I I like the spot for picket now he he's obviously not going to be the starter so that sucks if you had him in dynasty or anything but he's in a good solid foundation and if yep. you know Jalen did get banged up a little bit here and there last year if, if something major does happen I think Pickett can come in and He's got Devontae Smith. He's got A.J. Brown, Goddard, uh, Saquon Barkley now, one of the best offensive lines in football. Like, mm-hmm. Kenny Pickett's got better weapons and talent around him than he ever did in Pittsburgh. So exactly. I, I, I'd like to see what happens there if, um, you know, Jalen unfortunately goes down or something like that. Um, just a yeah. couple more teams I'm looking at here. Um, but I was going to say, but even, even him going there, your career ain't over with. I mean, Gardner Minshew has been a backup forever. You know what I'm saying? And every time he right. came in, he did what he's supposed to do. Now he's making, you know, $25 million over the next two years with the Raiders and could possibly be their starter for the, the whole season. So Kenny right. Pickett's career ain't over with yet. Right. And then the last big one that we did not talk about last week um, was the major signing of Calvin Ridley to the Titans. How did you see that fit for mm-hmm. uh, Tennessee? Another bit of random news that nobody knew was <laughs> right. going on, right? Nah, um, nobody saw that coming. No, nobody. And it's for him to get the most money in free agency at the, that position, we figured he would because he was the, I guess, rated like the number one receiver. But man, nobody saw ninety million for Calvin really. So congrats mm-hmm. to him for getting his money. And um, I actually like it though. Uh, I would have liked to see him like with the Kansas City or something like that. That's why I really thought he was going to try to go, but I'm sure they weren't giving him that money. And um, I mean, honestly, Will Le- like Will Levis isn't a terrible quarterback. I mean, you can see it in his game where he feeds. Off, he he reminds me of a Baker Mayfield, not how they play, but just the mm-hmm. energy. Last year when they right. played when they were playing in good games and he looked good, he was playing good. But when they getting blown out, then he, you know, he's face down. He look frustrated. He ain't right. playing as well. So getting more talent around him, you got Burks, you got Hopkins, you got Ridley, you got Tony Pollard and um, um, Spears. Yeah, Spears. You got Tajay over there. So that type of offense, man, can open up so many more lanes for Will Levis to grow. So Calvin yeah. really going in and D-Hop probably out in the year. Um I like it, man. It's something different I didn't expect, and I probably would have never guessed it, but 
Uh, if you want to compete, man, you better sign some people. So I, I like it. I like right. that move. I mean, the Titans are kind of doing what the Bears are doing. They are putting their offensive weapons around their young, you know, second year quarterback, or in this yep. case, um, you know, Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins are two professional wide receivers who know how to get mm-hmm. it done. They've scored a lot of touchdowns and caught a lot of balls in these in this league. So having both of those guys, um, Traylon Burks isn't like forced to have some monster season or, or do anything. He can learn a little bit more. He can learn from Hopkins, learn from Ridley, yeah. um, take his time to get his feet wet some more, basically. Chigakonkwo is an up-and-coming tight end. You have Pollard that they signed. They have Tajay Spears. The offensive line needs some work, but they have the seventh pick overall, which I expect them to address offensive tackle in. Um, you know, so they have a shot here to build this offensive line in this draft and they can have a really solid offense here, like around Will Levis. I think they're going to be, they can get their defense. Uh, their defense isn't terrible. Um, you know, Mike, Mike Vrabel had them playing above what they should have been doing. Mm, Yeah, for sure. Um, and then with Cal, you know, the one thing about, Callahan, their new coach, is he brought his dad over, uh, Bill Callahan, mm-hmm. who's a Browns yep. offensive line coach, and he is the best offensive line coach in football. So they're going to be able to find these little project type players or guys that Callahan really sees that fits um, his offensive line. And I guarantee you that offensive line is going to at least be average this year. They have Skaronsky, who they drafted last year, really high. Um, if they get Joe Alt or um, one of these other tackles in the draft this year to mm-hmm. add to that offensive line, they're going to be able to draft more guys or, or sign some free agents or improve the guys that they already have. Um, I think this Titans team is, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, they're going to win like what, four or five games. I wouldn't be shocked if they're like an eight, nine team, nine and eight, yeah. or something like that. Yeah. And, and teams like Jacksonville letting people in the division hang around, man. Jacksonville was. Yeah. Supposed to be the the you know number one team in this division, hands down. And uh last year they let two of those guys make the playoffs without them. So yeah, uh, I mean, it's, Houston, that division's Houston's that division's wide open. The best team, yeah. I think Houston's yeah. the best team. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Indy is not far behind. They have a solid defense nope. and. Uh, Excuse me, we didn't even get a really full off, uh, season of Anthony Richardson. Exactly. Again, you know, this Titans team. So that's going to be a, a really good division to watch. I know that's, yeah. a lot of people shit on that division as the worst division in football, but this year it's going to be very competitive. Yeah, so, and, right. and honestly, they didn't draft Will Levis either. So if he doesn't go out there and play well, they can move on just as fast as we've seen these other guys move on. So Yeah, the, um, the GM there um, that's there is the one who drafted Levis last year. Uh, Mm -hmm. So they made that move up to go get trade up for him. So that GM is, is with Levis. Um, And from what I understood, um, you know, the owner passed away a couple years ago. I think his daughter, I think it's his daughter has taken over. Um, And I guess, you know, she really likes Levis as well. That's why they kind of made that move to Levis during the season. So be interesting to see um, what happens there with Tennessee. Yeah, um, but I, I mean, I want to see Levis play, man. So let's, you know, let's, let's see. Hopefully oh, yeah, for sure. All right. So up next, we're going to talk, take a look at some of the mock drafts that are going on right now um, in the space. We have a um, a new Daniel Jeremiah mock that dropped today, which is Tuesday the 19th. Uh, we also had a Mel Kuyper Jr. mock drop today as well. And I have a couple other mocks as well that we're going to kind of look at. Um, I know this is running back month, so a lot of these mocks, you need like a three or four round mock to kind of see where these running backs land at. So I don't have too many of those. Uh, You know, those haven't been too populated, but we're kind of just going to look through some of these mainstream mocks. And then um, I do have a couple of uh, couple round mocks that we can look at for running back um, landing spots. But kind of just looking at Daniel Jeremiah's first. Uh, Caleb Williams, number one overall to the Bears. We all mm-hmm. you know, expect that now with Fields being traded. Uh, Commanders taking Drake May at two. Jaden Daniels, number three to the Patriots. Um, if I, I listened to the Audible, um, another great podcast that's been around for ages with Cecil Lammy and, and all those guys. Um, and they were pretty confident that Jaden Daniels is the guy for Washington. Um 
that the yeah. GM really likes Jaden Daniels from all the stuff that they were hearing from the combine, and it hasn't really picked up in the mainstream media yet. Um, yeah, I still crazy. I still see a lot of Drake May the Washington Drake May Drake yep. May. Um, I think it's Jaden Daniels from I, what I believe. Um, just hearing what the Audible guys talked about, so I think this might flip flop um, when it comes to draft day, but whatever um new england mm-hmm. could be the team that trades down as well we talked about that a few minutes ago uh, but mm-hmm. in this case they take Jaden daniels um and then he has number four overall minnesota trades up um you know probably uh gave up 11 23 and some other stuff to move up here to number four with the cardinals and they take jj mccarthy at four what would you think if if this scenario happened out in th- three quarterbacks went and the Vikings moved all the way up from McCarthy at four. I I honestly see it and believe it because you can't wait no longer. Um, If you, cause let's just say the giants, let's say the giants might want JJ. They might say, look, we want to scramble it up. We want to change up. We tired of Daniel Jones. We want to let JJ sit for a year and figure it out. So if you're going to do it, you better be calling the Patriots. If if I'm uh, the Vikings, I'm calling the commanders, the Patriots, and I'm going, you know, step by step, two, three, four. Who can give me my pick? Because I need to get my quarterback. Um, right. The longer you wait, the less chance you have. Denver can move up in front of you. So I actually honestly believe that this could be a serious scenario that could happen. All right. Hear, hear me out on this. Mm-hmm. They move up to four. They take Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> Who, the uh, Vikings? Yes. Oh. So they roll with Sam Darnold for a year or whatever. Maybe uh-huh. he's the guy. They could maybe get Bo Nix or Michael Penix in round two. And you have Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, and mm. Marvin Harrison Jr. Hey, EV, don't tell me that. I just sold Sam Darnold the other day for a, <laughs> a, a, a steal price. <laughs> oh, 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 I didn't even mention TJ Hawkinson. And mm. I didn't even mention Aaron Jones and Ty Chandler. Mm. You imagine that offense that would be... that reminds me of the '98 Vikings with Cole Pepper, Randy Moss, Chris Carter, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jake Reed, all those guys. It would be like the most explosive offense that we've seen since probably the greatest show on turf. And just imagine Sam Darnold being a quarterback. Like if I'm Sam right. Darnold, I, I I wouldn't even be able to sit down like i will be <laughs> wherever i'm watching the draft that man i would jump off the roof into the pool or something like there's no way yeah. you give me that offense ain't no way I, man honestly i think darnold can be okay for a year and you can figure your quarterback situation out he can next be okay. year he can. i think marvin harrison jr or neighbors even if they went with neighbors because a lot of teams like neighbors over harrison like either man, or like that's crazy i never thought of this scenario offense, maybe that's Never. This offense would be that'd just be crazy. Must see TV but, every week. But just imagine the backstabbing those the other GMs because they thinking that they trading up to get a quarterback. So they're not even thinking Marvin Harrison is in the picture. Right. So Arizona probably like good. They trading up. They getting a quarterback. We got our guy. And just imagine being the Arizona Cardinals right there. Man, I, I probably will wait eight, nine minutes before I even put my pick in. Man, I'd be so <laughs> my stomach like Tilted, not that right. neighbors isn't a good, you know, or, or, or a dunes. I've been saying a lot of dunes they too. But um to think that they trading up for a quarterback and Marvin Harrison is gone. <laughs> man, I'd be sick, man. Yeah, that would just it I'd would be, be an incredible offense, man. To like it would. It would. <sighs> I, I just want to see it personally. We'll, we'll see. It would. Um, right. But in this mock, they, they traded up for J.J. McCarthy. Number five, they have the New York Jets trading up with the Los Angeles Chargers. And the New York Jets select Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm. Aaron Rodgers, Marvin Harrison Jr., Man. Garrett Wilson, Brees Hall. That would be a fun offense, too. Man, DJ got to chill with these mocks, man. He giving these GM <laughs> some ideas, man. Hey, now I got to hear about Aaron Rodgers again. I don't know. I don't want to hear about no Aaron Rodgers. Man. That's my guy, man. I used to love Aaron Rodgers, but he take Dallas out every year, so I got tired of Aaron Rodgers. But, uh, man, Aaron Rodgers will come back with a vengeance if he got that offense. Man. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm a big Aaron Rodgers fan, too. So Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, like, but, I, like I good said. Good luck, Buffalo, the... with that one. Good luck. The, the whole AFC right. East, good luck. Like I said in the uh, 
Patreon chat uh, or the Discord chat earlier, like I would probably have to go to the hospital after the, that one because my erection would last longer than four hours. <laughs> Man, it's right, gonna be no, crazy. Hey, look, we gonna have to uh, take you off the live stream, man. We got, oh, we yeah, got. <laughs> hey, e, uh, man, you gotta cover your screen up, man. <laughs> uh, number six, New York Giants select Malik Neighbors. Mm, hey, I like that. They need uh, that uh, though. They do need that for sure. So, so what's uh, the deal with Waller? Is he retiring or what, man? I keep hearing this story about he retiring. Uh, he was supposed. He was ta- thinking about retirement, but. Um, the, I've seen somebody on Twitter post that was a fake account. Um, okay, he's I... he's still yeah he's still there, um, but he uh, this might be his last season. Okay, um, the Titans at number seven they take Joe Alt the yes, offensive tackle we talked yes, about, they mm-hmm. um, and then the next offensive player number nine the Chicago Bears get Romo Dunze so that would be awesome. You have Odunze, Keenan Allen. DJ Moore, Cole Komet, DeAndre Swift. That's a really nice offense uh, for Caleb Williams to, you know, grow with, basically. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. My, my, what, I want to ask you this, right, with Caleb. If Caleb goes out there and, let's just say, in three years, they don't even win the division one time, do you think that they can really, like, run him out? Because I know Caleb is a little more emotional than a lot of quarterbacks, and we've seen it in right. college. And a lot of people don't like how they – did feels they feel like they threw him away to the wolves and and i think it's some people's gonna be rooting against caleb because one they think he too you know he think he all that and this and that right. and um you got the lions who are literally stacking up right now green bay is on the rise and yep. minnesota with marvin harrison and, and Justin <laughs> jefferson they could right i mean if the bears can't win that division in three years it's like Dang, what was all this for? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that, that'd be tough, man. I, I wouldn't yeah. want to see it knowing that Kayla from the home team, but, man, that'd be tough to see, man, to see them not win a division with all this, that. I mean, I want to say it would put pressure on Caleb Williams, but it would be all on him if this ha- this scenario it, it would. happened. It would. Because the defense is, is up and coming. Uh, they were one of the best defenses at the end of last year for, like, the last two months. Mm-hmm. You get Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Odunze, Komet, Swift. Offensive line is solid. Like, that's all on you now, Caleb. We're, yeah. We we took you number one overall. We got to see your talent. And I agree with you. Like, I don't want to say he's a, a wuss or yeah, he just you know, got all low, this other you know. stuff. He's got all this um, ego or whatever. I think that could be his downfall. Yeah, especially put... if they if the fans turn on him if he's not winning, right, you know what right. I'm saying? It's it's not gonna look good for him. And I just hope he, you know, can survive the storm because in Chicago, they they gonna run him out of there if he oh, don't yeah. do what he's supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to uh think that or, or want to wish that on the kid, but no, no, uh uh-uh. um if he you know, if he's not mature enough to handle the situation, it, it could be ugly there for sure. Yeah, I agree with yeah. That. Um, I'm just saying because so, the division's getting better, man. It's going to be tough for the Bears to really go out there and just say, oh, yeah, we got this team. We're going to win it. You know what I'm saying? That division right, tough. Right. right. Um, number 10, so the Chargers moved back here with um, the Jets, and they take Talese Fuaga, the offensive tackle from Oregon State. So that's a nice mm-hmm. spot. Number 12, uh, they have the Broncos taking Brock Bowers. What would you think about Brock Bowers to the Broncos? I would think, what are the Broncos doing, man? They they all <laughs> over the place, man. <laughs> yeah, they like don't I have they, any weapons. Either. If any team needs a reset, it's them, man. Like they need right. to just anybody that's under contract that's getting paid, just get rid of them and just start over, man. Because it's it's bad over there, man. Sean Payton came in town and just made it worse than what we thought it could ever get. So, all right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to see that. Brock go over there and waste four years of his life, man. So, uh. I, I tell you one thing, he, him going in there, dynasty uh, drafts, man. You you know how they always say tight ends don't matter. Yeah, this mm-hmm. tight end would not matter in Denver whatsoever. So yeah, for sure. Uh, I wouldn't want no parts of it. Okay. Um, next one up here that we got offensively is wow, I didn't see this one coming. The thirteen. The Vegas Raiders draft Michael Penix Jr. at mm. 13. Hey. What, what would you think of that? I, I actually love that spot for him, but I just think 13 is a reach, though. I don't think they got to do that. Um, right. Especially after you just paid uh, Gardner Minshew. So, 
you know, if you're paying a guy $25 million and then you reaching for a possible second-round quarterback, uh, that's a bone. You know, that's a, that's a head-scratcher. But I like it, though. I like Penix going there. I just don't think he should go in the first. But not bad, man. And honestly, I think Penix can sit behind Minshew and learn a little bit, man. Minshew know how to run an offense, man. He He's not a, a, a league starter, per se, but he know how to play balls. So, man. Yeah, I, wouldn't mind uh, I, I, I still think it's a O'Connell and Minshew going to battle for that job, to be honest. Me too. Me too. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see how that one goes out. Uh, a little breaking news while we're on the podcast here. We were talking about them earlier. Uh, the Browns and Judy have agreed to a three-year contract extension worth up to $58 million and mm. includes $41 million in guarantees. Um, so basically $41 million. For him, that's a pretty good um, compared to what a lot of these other other people have gotten. Yeah, that's a good. That's uh, great, man. Great. Deal listen, the for, Browns uh, playing the Browns. chess over there, man. I like I like what they're doing, man. They got they got a uh, Mari Cooper for a fifth round. They got Judy for a six and a third swap. I mean, yeah, I mean when they, they traded for uh, Jarvis Landry, they only gave up a fourth and a sixth. Yeah, yeah, uh, man. They over there playing chess, man. I like I like what they got going on over there. Yeah. I, and I don't know. I know you were talking about trades and earlier. This isn't breaking news, but they got some stuff going on with Brandon Ayuk. They've been talking about while we've been on here. So oh, okay. it's, it's, it's heating up. I ain't want to say it because it ain't official yet, but it's it's talks out there right now about Brandon Ayuk, man. It's, it's to uh, does, do you know which team? To the Steelers. To the Steelers. Okay. They, they saying that he online saying that you know he's a Steelers. I don't know what that means, but. Ooh, okay. I yeah. haven't seen any of that yet. You, you know, Instagram means everything to everybody. So they say on his Instagram, <laughs> he got some Steelers stuff going on. So. Oh, yeah. All you right. Know. Uh, number 14, the Saints take uh, Fashanu, the offensive tackle from Penn State. So good spot for uh, for the Saints. Um, Seattle takes Troy uh, Fatanu, the offensive tackle mm-hmm. from Washington. You know, they have two really good offensive tackles already, so this guy could move into guard for a year um, as a rookie, and he was, like, super, super athletic at the combine. I don't know if you watched anything, but he looked like a damn tight end out there. He was just so quick um, Mm -hmm. for an offensive tackle. So definitely like um, that pick for Seattle. Um, J.C. Latham, 18th to the Bengals. Uh, they they did it. just sign Trent Brown today, the former Patriots offensive tackle. Um, I don't think that would prevent them from drafting an offensive tackle, but yeah, um, yeah. getting J.C. Latham would be a good good pick for the Bengals. Definitely. Uh, 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Tyler Guyton, the offensive tackle from Oklahoma. So you can see the big theme so far, offensive tackle, yep. offensive tackle. There's a yep. bunch of them. Uh, so good pick there for the Steelers. And they can <laughs> always use offensive line help. Miami at 21 takes Graham Barton. The um, center guard can kind of play all five kind of positions from Duke. Um, I like that for Miami. I would think Jackson Powers Johnson would be another. Yeah, good I, guy yeah, I was too. just about to say. Mm-hmm. JPJ. Uh, he yeah, he would be another one. Uh, so 23. So Arizona moved back here. Um with um minnesota in the draft here so at 11 they took jared verse in this draft mm-hmm. so they got a pass rusher and now at 23 they moved back they got the wide receiver they got brian thomas jr to pair up with kyler murray um there in arizona what would you think of uh, brian thomas jr there it's not a bad place to be man um no. i mean when you let marquise brown go you got to replace him you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. you, i mean they even let rondell moore go so right now Yep. pretty much michael wilson and greg dolch that's that's about it and uh yeah i, I like brian thomas man i i honestly sounds crazy but i think the jacksonville jaguars should definitely try to get brian thomas man i would love them to go go ahead and go get him but right yeah. um, i mean they lost ridley so it would make yeah sense. yeah if, you know florida nice weather um arizona's <laughs> arizona's in the dome so it's not bad either but Right. Yeah, I like that move, man. Kyler can definitely bring the best out of his number one uh, receivers for sure. So I, I would love that, especially Absolutely. for them to get a trade back and get Verse and Thomas. I mean, you missed out on Marv, but I mean, you get two guys like that, man. You, you can't complain. Yeah, you about get a, one of the best pass rushers in the draft, and exactly, you know, a lot of people's number four wide receiver in the draft. So I like yep, that. Yep, yep. Ooh, you'll you'll like this one. Dallas Cowboys at twenty four. They are the ones who take Jackson Powers Johnson. Mm, that's um, what I like. That would be a great pick for Dallas. I think. Um, 
get them a, a really elite center again, mm-hmm. kind of like back to their Travis Frederick days. So I, I like that a lot for them. Yeah, I got sniped on a mock draft last night. I wanted, I was going to take him too. I picked Dallas and he, he was gone, yeah. man. So yeah, <laughs> I like that. Uh, that I think I think that's probably where Dallas should focus their first round pick is offensive line. So oh yeah, uh, D line or O line? That's 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 their formula. Yeah. Green Bay at 25, they take Amarius Mims, the athletic freak offensive tackle from Georgia. Um, This would be a really good pick. Yeah, I wouldn't mind Dallas got Mims, man. He, I mean, Tyron Smith left, and you know, two big giants replacing each other. So I wouldn't mind Mims either. But um, yeah, I I like this for Green Bay, though. Yep, that's a good one. Um, Yeah, and then. The rest of the picks are all defense besides for the last pick, number 32. He does have the Kansas City Chiefs taking A.D. Mitchell from Texas, wide mm. receiver. So that would be an interesting one. Um, it would. It he would. has Mitchell going ahead of Xavier Worthy still, so that's interesting. Yeah, no. Nah, uh, I, I, like I do like A.D. Mitchell, though. I do. I do. I do. I think he get a lot of slack, though. I think a lot of people soured on him recently, yeah. but um, I like A.D., though. Yeah, me too. Um, let's kind of look at some of these other mocks that are on here. Um, when did Bucky do his? Yeah, Bucky hasn't done one in a long time. So we'll, we'll check out Chad Reuter's, uh mock from February 12th real quick. He has a three-round mock. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through and start looking at our running backs in this one. I'm not going to... Uh, go through every pick on this one but just kind of want to see where he has the running backs possibly going um in this draft because you you know probably the second round is where you're going to see your first running back um, mm-hmm. go off the board here and he does at number 34 actually um he has his first running back going off the board a lot higher than i normally see but he has blake quorum going to the patriots mm. wow what do you think of that one uh yeah and it's crazy because i always thought blake was was going to be the number one but it seems like he's dropping a little further down um more lists from what i've been seeing so mm. i don't know man the patriots i mean i know they still have stevenson over there and yeah. um they just signed somebody recently right uh, uh antonio gibson yeah antonio gibson so not bad um this i don't know from a week ago so i don't you know, oh, he might Gip- not have had Gibson the Antonio not Gibson there. sign okay. yet. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm not sure how that would shake up in the uh, running back room. Uh, like, I wouldn't know who to trust. Like, I, I couldn't right. tell you who, It would just who be a play. normal Patriots backfield. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah, know who to yeah. trust. Yeah, so I, I really wouldn't know who to trust, Who you know, what was going on. Um, and I think they probably need other knees in the second round, so – I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a receiver laying around right there that they could have took in that draft as well. In the second right, so. right, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, I I like Blake Corum. He's my RB three um, okay. in this class, so I do really like him. Do I like him on the Patriots? Probably not. I'm yeah, kind of still hoping yeah. he goes with the Chargers. Yeah, yeah me just too. Kind of, you know, me too. Harbaugh I, knows how to use him. I want to see him go to the Ravens, man. They they compare him to Ray Rice so much. Um, you know, right. H- Henry ain't gonna be there forever, so. Right. I would love to see him with the Ravens. Uh, at pick 39, they have the New York Giants selecting Jonathan Brooks from Texas. Mm. This would be a uh, very interesting pick. They did sign Devin Singletary there to kind of be the starter, but Brooks yep. is uh, more talented. But I think yes. it's kind of going to be a split, um, well, at least for this season. So, But I do like the pick, though, uh, for the Giants at 39, if they went that way. Yeah, that's the Cowboys pick. So Giants, get out of here. Leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know Dallas wants. I think. I think a, a lot of people know that. Yeah. I think Dallas is going to have to trade up to get. I think so. That's why I just said, man, the Giants yeah. got to get out of here, man, because we're going to have to move up. Because yeah, they made it's, it obvious. It's all out there. Everybody yeah. knows about it. They so. made it obvious, man. I mean, we don't have nobody in the room. So yeah, they, they re-signed Dowdle. They still have Deuce Vaughn, but that's it. That's so. it. That's it, man. So. Uh, let's see if there's any more running backs here in this uh, third round. Okay, so here we go. Dallas Cowboys at pick 56 select Jalen Wright from Tennessee. Okay, all right. That's that's not that's not what I wanted, but we can make mm-hmm. it work though. You know, right? Um, 
he doesn't fit that offense because mm-hmm. he would Jalen Wright would be perfect for a, a Shanahan you know, exactly. type offense, Rams offense. But that would um, that would let me know that we not we going back to just not running the ball a lot either. You know, we just going right. keep throwing the ball like we did last year a lot. Um, yeah. So that'd be interesting. Yeah, um, it would. At, at pick thirty eight. I don't see this one or 58. I'm sorry. I don't see this one happening now after they brought um, in some new guys, uh, but Braylon Allen, 58 to green Bay. Yeah. Like you said, if, if uh, Josh wasn't there, man, that'd be, that'd be tough. Right. I would like that. Um, but with Josh being there, it's kind of a hard to see situation. Um, right. I agree. Yeah. That's, that's pretty hard to see, but I, I would like it if Josh wasn't there though, man, that would have been good. I would have liked that. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think that would be um, a really interesting fit there for Braylon Allen. Uh, mm-hmm. Wouldn't have to obviously move very far, <laughs> yep. being from Wisconsin to Green Bay. So uh, that would be an interesting one. And then let's kind of look at his round three here real quick and see uh, if there's any more running backs in this draft that he put there. So at 71, he has Arizona taking Audric Estime from Notre Dame, the big um, – bruising running back what would you think of estimate there to, to the cardinals well they still have connor i mean connor isn't yep. young. he isn't young either so um right. seems like arizona wants to have a, a running back room where they just rotate and um right they, I, they have uh it's connor and um they have michael carter who they michael uh, carter got michael from carter the cardinals uh they have amari di mercado still yeah um, yeah it. Yeah, it seemed like they don't want to have just a clear one. I mean, Connor is the clear one, but um, you know, with this health issues, they they just want to just bunch up a bunch of talent and different size guys and just use them how they want to use them. If uh, anything happens to Connor, so it wouldn't be a bad move. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, and then another pick here that's uh, in round three, pick eighty five. This is your guy. I want I want to hear your thoughts on him because. Mm-hmm. Uh, Last week, Mike kind of shit on him a little bit. I don't know if you listened to the episode or not. Yeah. Uh-huh. Trey Benson to the Cleveland Browns at pick 85. Mike been shitting on Trey Benson for, for three years now, man. At least <laughs> at least two. That's for sure. So, right. Um, you said to the Browns? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Well, I don't think Trey would start right away anyway, no matter where he goes. But, um. It, I guess it would depends on one Chubb's health and two what they're doing with Jerome Ford. Um, if 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 Chubb yeah, isn't I think as it healthy, would be like start of the year. I think it'd be Benson and Ford would be the two guys. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. But I'm saying, well, is, is Chubb coming back? Is he staying a more more than one year? Right. Um. You know, what I'm saying that'd be the question for me with Trey going there. Me personally, I think Trey is solid, man. He he can he can get it done. He's not. This this whole class isn't full of no running back that we can say, hey, get he he's the guy. You know what I'm saying? He get behind that line and we're gonna trust him as the number one every down. So mm-hmm. I don't expect none of these guys to be world beaters in the running back position. But um Benson and Ford, I wouldn't mind though, because Ford, we seen what he could do last year. So yeah. What what Benson, did you think? Uh what did you think of Benson at Florida State? I actually liked him. I, I thought he lost a lot of his steam because during, in the offseason, I, I had him as the RB1. Not just because I'm a Florida State guy, but right. I thought coming into the season, he was the man. And um, I don't know if it was the offense or if it was him, but I know he had certain plays where one one curry, 60 yards, boom, he gone. Yeah. And then he had those games where he just get the ball and fall over. You know what I'm saying? So right. um, he was kind of up and down. It wasn't really consistent, but he can run. He's not slow. You know, he's not as fast, but uh, he's a solid running back. I just say that. You know what I'm saying? He he ain't the best running back, but he's solid. He He's good as a backup running back for sure. I wouldn't want him starting on my team, though. Right, right. Okay. But, but the um, running back position nowadays, man, it's just – the play calling, really, where they put you at, yeah. you know, you know, if they yeah, want you. I mean, if you look at his combine numbers, he does compare to Brees Hall. I don't think he plays like Brees Hall, but mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I, I I did like what I saw from him. He is my RB two. I like I like him quite a bit. Um, 
it, just a lot of these guys, it depends on the landing spot and the scheme. Yeah, so. That's what I said. The play calling, man. That's that's really what it comes yeah. down to. Now, if he, if he went to Dallas, I wouldn't mind him starting for Dallas because I honestly don't think we're going to have a running back, a run first approach. So, right. you know, throw him in when we need him, but Dak going to go back there and throw the ball 40, 50 times like he's been doing. So, right. And then the last pick of uh, round three in this mock. Um, 102 Tampa Bay selects Marshawn Lloyd from USC. I would like that one too. Uh, yeah. Pair him up with Rashad White. That would give them two really good backs. I like that one too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because Chase Edmonds, man, is, you know, he's pretty done at this point. So, yeah, they brought him back, but he's just a guy at this Eddie, point. He I is. Think injuries have kind of uh, taken his athleticism away from him. Um, yeah. All right. So let's go and uh, we'll go to Mel Kuyper's mock that came out today as well. Now you told me there was some a couple wild things. Yeah, there, so man. Mayo. Let's see. I haven't checked it out yet. So Mayo uh, got pick some one. In here. <laughs> pick one. Caleb Williams goes to the Bears at one. Number two, Jaden Daniels to Washington. I like that. Mm-hmm. Number three, New England takes Drake May. I like that. Number four, Marvin Harrison Jr. to Arizona. I like that. Number five, he does have Malik Neighbors going to the Chargers at number five. Mm-hmm. That um, I, I I do like that for Herbert. You know, neighbors going there. I mean, they don't really have anybody. They cut Mike Williams. They traded off Keenan Allen. So it'd be Quinton Johnston and uh, neighbors and Josh Palmer. Um, I think that easily becomes you know Herbert's go to guy. So I, I I like that one a lot. Yeah, I just, I just only fear the offense, man. I just hope you know whatever receiver yeah. goes there, it actually. Like, even Herbert, man, for Herbert to be this 4,000-yard guy that we know he can be, I just don't know what the offense is going to be with Greg Roman there. So, right. you know, I hope that doesn't affect uh, whatever receiver they take in the first round if they take one. Number six, he has the New York Giants selecting Romo Dunze. So the top three receivers all gone in the first six picks, mm-hmm. uh, four, five, and six to be exact. Seven, Titans, Joe Alt, which we kind of expect, like that yep. pick. That's chalk right there. Yep. Uh, number 10, Brock Bowers to the New York Jets. Um, Aaron Rodgers and Brock Bowers, that would be an interesting one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, like I said, man, Aaron Rodgers, man, uh, uh, that's my guy, man. As long as he out of Green Bay and ain't playing us every year, you know, I'm cool with him now. So. Right. Uh, like 11, it. he's got J.J. McCarthy to uh, Minnesota. So Minnesota doesn't have to trade up. McCarthy falls in their lap. Number 12, you, you mentioned this one to me. Bo Nix, number 12, to Denver. <laughs> that's crazy. I think I see this as their second-round pick. I don't see yeah, this that's as That's what I'm saying. Number 12 in the first round. Man, never go out and do that, man. They going. Actually, I don't remember if they have. I don't know if they have their second-round pick, to be honest. They already can't breathe in Denver. They're going to lose their breath, man, about that <laughs> Bo Nix pick coming in number 12. Right. They could probably trade down a couple hey, picks, too. A hundred percent. Yeah, I'm they, they don't own a second-round pick, so okay. they're going to have to get a second-round pick somehow. So maybe Denver is a team that trades back a little bit. So I could see that. Um, I think he I think he would probably put them you know, later in the draft. He didn't do trades in this draft, so he would probably have this as a trade-down scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, like, with you, if you just – looked at it without any, you know, looking ahead of, of what he's really trying to do. Um, this would be a little shocking. I agree. What, what, what do you think if, if the Broncos called Minnesota and said, hey, yeah, I want to move up to the 12 and have 11 and 12, and we take that 23 and some other stuff? You know, I mean, that would be right. a lot of trading up for Minnesota. But I'm saying if J.J. failed to them at 11, and now you got a back-to-back at, at the 12, I mean, you know, it's different scenarios, but the Broncos shouldn't be picking at 12. They should be trading back no matter who's there. I think they right. should just be trading back. They yeah, need they too need much. A lot, of, a lot of help. I agree. And they're not yeah. in a position to go get one of the elite quarterbacks. At all. At all. Um, 13, he has the Raiders taking J.C. Latham, the tackle from Bama, like that. Uh, Ola Fashanu, tackle from Penn State to New Orleans at 14. Uh, like that, Troy Fatanu to you know we talked about that in DJ's mock two from Washington, mm-hmm. uh, back to Seattle at sixteen. I like that. Uh, Talise Fuaga, the big offensive tackle from Oregon State, goes to the Bengals. That would be nice. Yep. Uh, get Joe Burrow a big <clears throat> stud offensive tackle. Um, number twenty, 
Brian Thomas Jr. to the Pittsburgh Steelers. What would you mm. think of that one? I love it. I love it, man. Um, you yeah, got I Pickens. Think they're in the they're in the sweepstakes for it now. Yeah, you got you got Pickens, man. You know we know what he can do. So you get mm. Brian Thomas, who can actually play the receiver position. Um, right, like right. George Pickens is a he's a great receiver, but he's more of a athlete. Uh, you know, highlight reel, big catch guy. Um, mm. you, so you put Brian Thomas over there, man. I would love that offense. Uh, 21 Miami Dolphins select Graham Barton. That's the same in DJ's mock. Mm-hmm. Um, 24, the uh, Cowboys select Tyler Guyton, the offensive tackle from Oklahoma. I think I you took Guyton last night myself. Yep. Yeah. So that, that could definitely be a, uh, one that they do. Um, let's see. Uh, 26 Tampa Bay selects Xavier worthy to pair up with Mike Evans and Chris <clears throat> Godwin. Um, and Trey Palmer is there too. What I was just about to worthy? say, yeah, that, I, I wouldn't like that at all for Xavier, yeah. like at yeah, all. Yeah, <laughs> I think it would be. That's kind of like a luxury pick almost. Um, you know, especially since you know uh, they traded Shakir, uh, Shaquille Barrett. Uh, they lost Devin White. So exactly. They got Levante David, who's older. Um, so their defense and and traded Carlton Davis too. Mm-hmm. I think they're probably got to be looking at the defensive side of the ball. And, and and their head coach is a defensive guy, so I don't defensive guy, right? I yeah, know. I don't see that. Um, Detroit Lions at twenty nine take Xavier Leggett, the wide receiver from South Carolina. Um, man, I don't know how I feel about that one. <laughs> I don't mind it. I just believe that they need so much help with in their cornerback safety room that it's it would make no sense for them not to address that first. Right. Uh, but as far as the pick goes and who they took, um, it's not bad. This is not a need that I think that they, you know, need to be yeah, taken I right mean, now. He's, I have mixed feelings on Leggett. I, I wouldn't personally take him this high. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, he's got tantalizing speed, but he's only done it for one year. That's yeah. one of my worries about him. Um but I, I also think Jamison Williamson or I, Jamison Williams is really coming on too. I well, I was gonna say, is this a we took him and if Williams don't do what he's supposed to do, then he's gonna get a jury duty treatment next year, maybe. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think like you know, you can have Jamison and Amon Rock can play the slot and that. I kind of would want like um a bigger outside guy. Like I think AD Mitchell would be a better fit. Yeah, uh, that was hundred percent. Hundred percent for them. So that would be interesting. Yeah. Um Amarius Mims, uh, Baltimore does it again. Amarius Mims, the mm-hmm. elite offensive tackle uh, that just has all the traits in the world, just falls right in the Baltimore's lap again. Yeah, like man. Always. Yeah, um, Derek Henry running behind him, man. It's, it's cheat code, man. Cheat code to the absolutely cheat code to the NFC North uh, Championship, man. <laughs> Thirty-one, the Forty ers Take Roger Rosengarten, the offensive tackle from Washington, so another Washington offensive lineman. And then 32, he has Odane Mitchell to the, the Kansas Chiefs. City Chiefs. That would be a, a, a good one, too, because, you know, Marquise Brown could stretch the field. Rasheed mm-hmm. Rice can kind of do everything. Kelsey's over the middle. AD could definitely be, like, uh, that outside sure. X receiver for them. Uh, so, so I do like that one. So outside of Miami, are they the all, the fastest offense in the league after that uh, pickup? Uh, probably. Yeah, they're 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 up there again. I mean, they yeah. still got Valdez Scantling over there. He's pretty fast. Well, they cut him. They don't have. Oh, him. you know what? No, my fault. My fault. They yeah, they cut him. They they kept yeah. um. They kept uh. The one they got from the Jets. Um. Oh, um, McCall Hardman, yeah. Yeah, Hardman. They kept Hardman. That's right. Yeah, Hardman's still there. So yeah, it would it would probably be a um a really fast offense. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah, for sure. I agree. All right, so let's move on now to um Shane Hallam's um seven round mock. Um, I Man, I wonder sure how long I'm, that took to do. Yeah, he always does um, seven round mocks. He does a really good job on these. Uh, but we're just going to look at the running backs here. So I'm going to probably have to go to round two first uh, to find the running back spots here. Um, so let's see here. Uh, first running back is 56 Dallas Cowboys select Jonathan Brooks. 
We kind of talked about that one already. So yeah, that's a good spot. Nobody <clears throat> else goes in round two. So round three, number seventy, the New York Giants select Trey Benson. I like that mm. a lot. I that do. would be a great pick for the Giants because Singletary and Benson, I think, could uh, play well together. Yeah, that would be uh, that'd be sure. nice. Um, let's see, Bucky Irving to Houston at eighty six. That would be, you know, they just got Joe Mixon. Irving mm-hmm. would definitely be a different flavor. So I I do like that. I think I don't know if Irving's going to go this high, but um, I do I do like. You know, the kind of fit there uh, mm-hmm. he could provide. Um, he has Blake Corum, 91, to Green Bay. Uh, this was before the um, free agency, this mock. So I bet you that one would change now. Uh, I don't mind that fit, though. I, I believe he has start over to A.J. Dillon. Like, he, he can... Well, he'll they got a, Jacobs now, so... Uh, nah, but I'm saying I think he he can be a little more... Because he can right. mirror what Jacobs does, you know? Um, right. So I wouldn't mind that trade. I mean that that uh pickup. I, okay. I don't think it's necessary, but I wouldn't mind it though. Right. At ninety five, he has the Kansas City Chiefs select Braylon Allen. Hmm. Mike would have a uh, a field day with that one. <laughs> That's Mike's guy. Man, that'd be um, tough. Yeah, that would be a really good spot. One oh five, they have the Chargers selecting Jalen Wright. Hmm. Um. And now, I mean, it's it's a run first offense. If Jalen Wright is Will be. Um, a really good prospect, then man, Jalen Wright could have a field day in that offense. So he'd be walking right in, like walking right into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we not we not. I mean, I'm sure we not, but we not believing that Spiller or anybody that's there is going to be doing anything this year, right? <laughs> no, I mean, it, this is a whole new regime, and they let yeah. Eckler walk. I think Josh Kelly's a free agent, or he still might be there. I th- I know Gus. Did he sign Gus? But and they did sign Gus, who yeah. was with Greg Roman and, yeah. and all them. So um, he's going to be in there, have a a good role. So um, we'll see what happens there. Marshawn Lloyd, one fifteen to the Bengals. I mean, they have Z- like I said, this was before free agency. So Zach Moss already signed there. They have Chase Brown adding in Marshawn Lloyd. They'd have three really good running backs there if, if that were to happen. So that wouldn't be bad. <clears throat> um, Will Shipley, one twenty four to San Fran. You know, everyone mm-hmm. kind of compares him to McCaffrey. Anyway, I was just about to so. say, man, that's that's a Mike. Shan- that's a uh, Kyle Shanahan move, though. Yep. That's that's a Kyle Shanahan pick for sure. Uh, 129, he has the Vikings take Audric Estime from Notre Dame. That would give them something completely different than what they have right now in Jones and Chandler. Yep. So Estime, that, that would be interesting. Um, Ray Davis, 133 to can, uh, Baltimore. I like that one a lot. And, Ray Davis <coughs> there would be a good one. You know, I was getting the mocks mixed. I was like, didn't they just take one? But that was, I'm thinking oh, about yeah, that. Oh, yeah, that was a different mock. mock. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, let's see, Dylan Labe to New England at 135 in round five. Um, Kendall Kendall Milton to Tennessee 144. Eh, I'm not. That wouldn't be bad. Raiders take Daywan Edwards, another running back from Georgia. The pair up was Amir White and Madison. Mm-hmm. So that wouldn't be bad. <clears throat> I, I do like Daywan Edwards quite a bit. Um. Let's see. Isaiah Davis to Buffalo. That would be an interesting one from South Dakota State. Yeah. Uh, Jawar Jordan to the Eagles. Eh, I don't see Jawar Jordan might not even get drafted. Um, Let's see if there's anybody else. Nobody else there. Ooh, this one's interesting. Uh, I know we're not talking quarterbacks, but 177, the Philadelphia Eagles select Jordan Travis. Mm. I, and I, I think, I don't know if it was I think when we talked the last show, I, th- I think I think I said Travis to Dallas, like sitting behind Dak for a year. I think that's what that it could was. Be a good one, yeah. But um, I, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that either though. Him sitting behind Hurts, man. I mean, he got a whole year to sit back and just you know. Yeah, and behind Pickett too. Behind so Pickett. Yeah, like, man, I wouldn't mind that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, Jace McClellan, uh, McClellan to um, Arizona, one eighty-seven in round six. Kamani Vidal to the Saints. Uh, that would be a good one. Frank Gore Jr. to Indy. So he goes back to a place where his dad played. Mm-hmm. Uh, 194, Jacksonville takes Dylan Johnson from Washington. That's a big hammer running back. That's kind of what they could use. So that's a good fit. 
Um, let's see. Uh, Jaden Sheridan, running back from Monmouth to the Browns in 207. Um, and that's it for round six. And then round seven, uh, let's take a look here if there's anybody that stands out at the running back spot. Wow, no round seven running back so far. There we go. We got one. Co uh, Cody Schrader to the Ravens. That feels like a Ravens pick if I ever saw mm, one. Yeah, 100%. Um, Rashawn Ali to Tampa Bay at 254. That'd be another good pick. So, yeah, some really interesting running back um, fits there for you know a lot of these mock drafts. Um, yeah. It's going to be all over the board when it comes to the mock draft time and when it comes to the real draft as well. We don't we don't know <clears> where <throat> half these guys are going to go, where people have them rated. Uh, Especially the running back stuff. position. The, the running right, back position exactly. to me is the – when it comes to mock drafts, man, I couldn't tell you where, where they're going to go. It's, I mean, other than Dallas, right. we know that we, we know Dallas is going to take one. But right. um, maybe the Chargers, but it's just like who do they take? Which one? Who? Wh what round? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. It's going to yeah. be real tricky on his running backs. Yeah, agreed, one hundred percent. Yeah, but yeah, that's um, that's it. Looking at the mock drafts, and we talked about free agency quite a bit. So, uh, good stuff there. You ready to uh, do America's favorite game, and we'll get out of here? Oh yeah, let's get it cracking, Ev. Let's do All it, man. Right. Um, well, I've been asking everybody else uh, since it's running back month. Who's uh, Fizzle's all time favorite running back? Mm, my all time favorite. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I'm I'm always difficult, man. I can't give you one answer, but I will say the number one of all time to me is Barry Sanders. That's the guy. Yeah. Man. That's yeah. That's like number one, hands down. I know Emmett played for Dallas, but no, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good old Barry. Right. But my my all time favorite, dang, sheesh. You know, running backs, man. They they come and go. They move around so much. I would probably say in my lifetime of watching, it got to be Adrian Peterson, man. Adrian, AP, yep, that's what a lot of people a, have said. APAD, man, that that guy right there, man, some special. Even, no, yeah, I mean, I remember watching him at Oklahoma, and it was like, mm -hmm. oh my god, I can't wait for this guy to get to the NFL. He gets the yeah, NFL, man. he's just as advertised. Yeah, like, he man, was, he was um, he was a he freak, was man. He was if if he didn't, and then he took a break. You know, he had a situation, and he came back and. He didn't lose a step, you know. So yeah. tore his ACL at like week sixteen of one year. Yeah, um, came yeah. back in like whatever it was, six seven months, and yeah. he for two thousand yards. I, I'm still mad that he couldn't get that record. He was like six yards away, man, from getting the record, yeah. and nobody acknowledged that he only needed six yards. I'm not sure what the miscommunication was, but the man needed like six or eight yards to get the the you know rushing record and. Didn't get right. it. I'm still mad that that didn't happen. So <laughs> right, right. Yeah, now yeah. AP, that's my guy, man. That's my okay. guy. All right. What about all time favorite Cowboys running back and all time favorite Florida State running back? Hmm. Okay, so Cowboys. I, I mean, it got to be Emmett because um Emmett, okay. Emmett, Emmett was just a guy. You know, I can't I can't put anybody behind. I mean, over Emmett. Um, right. Yeah. That is that wouldn't be you know possible, but uh. Florida State, uh, it's got to be my my guy, man. Um, Warwick Dunn, man. Warwick Dunn, yeah. That's, That's my man. Like you know, yeah. man. Listen, when he got with Mike Vick, because I already told you, Mike Vick was my quarterback. So when right. him, when he got with Mike Vick, especially when I'm not sure if this was NFL 2K or Madden. I want to say NFL 2K on on Dreamcast. Man, listen, it was nobody stopping that offense, man. So <laughs> Warwick Dunn, Mike Vick was a cheat code in any game they played on. Yeah, so and then they had uh Peerless Price they picked up and he had that 98 speed yeah. receiver. Yeah. Crumpler. Man. Yeah, they were that's they it, were man. So Warwick Dunn, 100 percent my guy, man. That's that's Warwick my dog Dunn. right there. Okay. He had a short yeah. career, but I don't think I think he kind of like just faded away from football. He ain't really care about it because I know he he does a lot of uh help helping like um single mothers or something like that so yeah yeah i don't think um, he uh really cared about the football at some point but that's my man 100 percent my my florida um, state guy so i'm just gonna look this up too so i mean florida state has had some really damn good running backs um you know, throughout Florida State's history. So obviously Warwick Dunn is up there. They had Dalvin Cook there. 
Mm, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's my second guy. Devontae Freeman, who helped win them a national title with Jameis. Mm-hmm. Uh, Greg Jones. I remember Greg Jones. He was a fucking beast. Uh, he played for Jacksonville there for a few years. Um, he was a big one. Uh, Cam Akers was there. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Travis Miner played there for um, in the uh, 97 to 2000. Leon Washington. I loved mm-hmm. him, man. When he played yeah, for the that Jets, was my boy. he was uh, he was exciting. Uh, dual not not dual threat, but just that electric running back, return yep. specialist. Loved mm-hmm. Leon Washington. Quick, he was quick. Um, yeah, Edgar Bennett played there. Uh, former Packers running back from uh, the uh, late nineties. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Thompson was there. Um, yeah, you know, played for uh, Washington and, and some other spots. Um, Lorenzo Booker, I remember him. Some of these other Whoa. guys I don't remember, but yeah, La- La- yeah, Lorenzo Booker was a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, Antoine Smith, Carlos Williams, I remember him. He played for the Bills for a couple years. Um, yeah, there's some, there's some definitely some, uh, some interesting Florida State running backs that have played there o- over time. So they, they've had some good ones. And look, I had no idea you were gonna ask those questions, so I didn't wear this hoodie on purpose. But you know, <laughs> I, I definitely uh, seen it. I was like, man, I ain't wore this in a while. Let me let me put on rep for the team, man. You know? Yeah, hell yeah, man. I I always like I I did that last week with Mike and Iowa and stuff. So I figured mm-hmm. um, I get get your guys's too with Dallas and Florida State. So um, that's good it. Way, good way to end the show, man. But uh, Fizzle, appreciate you uh, hopping on here again with me, man. We'll do it here next month as well. Um, but yeah, man, great time chatting it up with you. Always, always, Evie. You know that. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Um, you can follow him at Fizzle Dollars, D O L L A A S, on uh, Twitter. Um, on everything, yep. Yeah, on, on all the stuff. Instagram. You probably got that TikTok going. Uh, I I just did it. <laughs> I made a TikTok so I could claim my name, and some robot wouldn't take it. But I'm I'm never on that. Thing. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm never. I, I don't I'm even know how to use it. that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at Eric Vanek NFL is my Twitter at America's Game Pod as well on Twitter. Follow the South Harmon brand at South Harmon FF. Fizzle's the one uh, running that, retweeting all our stuff, putting out polls, um, mm-hmm. all kinds of good stuff. So you can interact with uh, them on Twitter. Uh, YouTube is at, at South Harmon FF as well. Uh, we're always posting this video up for America's Game, 4D Chess, Trade Show. All that good stuff is on YouTube as well. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Fizzle, you got anything before we get out of here, man? Um, nah, uh, I, I actually wanted to speak on my current favorite running back is Brees Hall, though. So Brees Hall is my Brees guy, Hall, okay. 100%. Uh, that's my dog, man. So that's my favorite running back in the game right now. But yeah, I'm, uh, a, I'm, uh, I'm still a Nick Chubb guy, even though okay. he had that bad injury. But Nick Chubb, mm-hmm. beast, absolute beast. Yeah, last year it set it all for me when Aaron Rodgers went down and Brees was out there just cooking man i mean granted he was getting fed a lot of targets because they ain't had really much that was going on so i'm curious to see how it's going to look when Aaron Rodgers is actually throwing the ball downfield i'm wondering right. how many catches breach can get but to right. do what he did with no o-line and that putrid offense around him right right man breach breach my guy man so you know before I, before i close out america's game on the running back month i had to let him know man breach hall him trade him to me i need him so <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh that's it man on my end i don't have nothing going on i got some stuff i'm working on behind the scenes that uh i'm gonna speak on soon but awesome. once it's here everybody gonna know about it for sure sweet sweet all right fizzle appreciate you coming on man uh we will be back next week for episode 35 of america's game not sure if i'm gonna start wide receiver and tight ends yet but probably um, so look forward to that for next week. Uh, but until next time, we'll see you guys.